See Microsoft's Copilot for security powered by Tanium real-time data on today's Tanium Tech Talk. Welcome back to Tanium Tech Talks. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. Is it my imagination or has the pace of technology accelerated even in the last year? I mean, AI is now in the hands of ordinary people and the tech giants, and the innovation just keeps coming faster and faster. Now, I have to tell you, I was blown away when I saw this demo you're about to watch today. It truly is next level. I mean, think about it. AI needs data, and Tanium is your real-time data source for enterprise IT. Now imagine interacting with that data from a security operations perspective or you know, for real-time investigation and response, vulnerability management, compliance, you name it. That's amazing to see what is now happening with Tanium and Microsoft here. And back with me today is Mike Fiorina. Uh, Mike, please introduce yourself for those who haven't met you yet. Good to be back on the show, Ashley. Uh, my name is Mike Fiorina. I am the field CIO for our Microsoft partnership here at Tanium. And that really means that I'm the field technical lead for our Microsoft integrations operating under the uh, engineering strategy group here at Tanium. Well, Mike, last time you were here, you gave us an overview of all the Microsoft and Tanium integrations, and we couldn't talk about this one yet. So now this one's hot off the presses, and I'm really excited that we can finally talk about it. So uh, tell us, what's the problem that we're solving today? Yeah, so uh, Microsoft introduced Copilot for Security, just went generally available last week. And the idea behind that was they wanted to enable uh, folks with not necessarily vast security expertise to tap into the AI boom. So the ability to use generative AI to help solve cybersecurity problems. And uh, we decided to participate that in that program, the early access uh, program for partners about six months ago. And uh, we're pleased to go uh, be available on launch day with Microsoft last week for our integration into the Copilot for Security. You know, I've heard rumors. Is it true that we're one of the first partners in the Copilot space? Yeah, yeah. There was a, a very small group of technology partners that had available plugins on day one, and we were proud to be one of those. Wow, I can only imagine working in software for a big portion of my career. How much dev time went into cutting edge? Uh, resources like this. So what exactly did we build? So when Microsoft first came out with the idea and the concept of Copilot for Security, they articulated that they wanted to produce a solution that was leveraging generative AI with a natural language query interface and using the introducing the ability of doing things at machine speed, which as a longtime Tanium employee, yeah, that sounds pretty familiar to you, I would imagine. And, and we thought the same, the ability to leverage that kind of whole natural language query type of methodology in order to uh, enable more people to get value out of technology solutions and then incorporating real-time data into that. And so the vision that we had with this was that uh, we wanted to be a data source for Copilot for Security to integrate our capabilities natively into that Copilot interface so that when a, an analyst might be investigating or querying the, the AI, uh, then they're... It, able to take advantage of Tanium data and Tanium capabilities natively from within that experience. And again, this just kind of goes back to Tanium strengths and Microsoft strengths, right? Microsoft's got the, the compute power here. Tanium has the real-time data. It's like a, a perfect uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, th these are made for each other here. So uh, what are the early adopters saying? Everybody's been giving us positive feedback. I think, you know, this is a brand new solution set, a brand new platform that Microsoft has introduced. So we're all learning at the same time about how best to leverage it, how to structure our questions, things like that, how to perform the appropriate skills matching, things like that to make things more efficient, more targeted, more accurate. Uh, but I think people see the value in it. So it, the nice thing about it is that it's uh, effectively agnostic. You can have plugins available from any number of different vendors, as well as a lot of Microsoft native solutions that allow you to take advantage of everything from within that single experience. So you can pull information from Defender, from Sentinel, from, from their threat intelligence platform, from Tanium, from other vendors, um, all to query and, and get it, get access to all the, the data that's, that's out there that's often difficult to collate and query. Uh, and so that's really what the problem that Microsoft's trying to solve here and the feedback so far has been very positive. 
you know, we always hear that the security operations desk is just so short staffed and there and, and maybe they are properly staffed, but it's just a flood of stuff to triage. So we're trying to help with that problem. So uh, as we go through to, to those who are watching right now, so what we're going to cover today is how does this work? How do I set it up? How do I get it? So so we're going to give you all that today. So so Mike, uh, where should we start? How about uh, can you give us a demo just to show it how it works? I can certainly do that. All right. So the first thing you do in order to access Copilot for security is go to the URL you see on the screen here, which is securitycopilot.microsoft.com. We'll walk through the setup here in a minute and show you how that, that is all handled. But as long as this is enabled in your Microsoft 365 tenants, uh, then you have the ability to, to enter Copilot for security and start asking questions. And there's a concept of sessions that's associated with Copilot that allows you to have kind of an interactive list of all of the prompts that you've issued, the queries, that kind of thing. And it allows you to maintain the context of those things, save it for potential first future use and reissuing and that sort of thing. Uh, and so it's really simple. It's just uh, kind of using that familiar chat GPT and AI uh, kind of interface that we've gotten familiar with over the past few months or year. So I can walk up here as uh, an analyst and say, hey, you know, maybe I was given some information about a particular vulnerability that somebody wants me to investigate. So I could say, hey, please describe to me a vulnerability CVE 2020 dash 9548. It's older, but maybe there was something that happened, a zero day, something along those lines. And so Copilot is going out there and it's investigating and pulling information from the public website or whatever plugins that have been associated with it in order to gather information about this particular CVE. So you can see right here, it queried Defender Threat Intelligence, pulling information about this particular one, and it's going to give me a response that indicates what the nature of this vulnerability is. All right, so we have some info about it. It's a critical severity vulnerability with the CVSS 3 rating of 9.8. Not great. So in this case, maybe I want to get a little bit more information about this. I could say, hey, list endpoints that are vulnerable to this particular CVE. And so you can see this, this question that it's, it's kind of looking into, checking the plugins you're using. So this is an area where it's going to be doing what it calls skills matching. Uh, and it's going to say like, all right, based on the question that was issued, I am probably be a good candidate to answer this based on the fact that we have access to all of the CVE findings associated with this particular vulnerability. And then immediately spits out this list, all of the endpoints that have been identified as vulnerable for the TVE. And so one of the really neat things about our plugin is actually you have the ability to incorporate this into your, your uh, security copilot native experience, but you can also pivot directly out of copilot into Tanium that would give you the ability to pivot directly into the Tanium interface with that context associated with it. And then one of the key things to, to understand about Copilot for Security is that it is a read-only platform at this point in time. So Microsoft has given everybody themselves their own solutions along with vendors like us the ability to perform any kind of queries that are associated with whatever my pursuit is. Uh, but it doesn't give you the ability to perform any kind of active remediation or changes from within the context of my my exploration, my my uh, my investigation here. So, if you wanted to perform any kind of remediation, we make it really easy for you to do so. So, I could immediately click this particular question. It's going to put it back into my Tanium experience, and then I'm going to get that list of all the things that I was looking for. So, in this particular case, I'm looking for CV9548. I can immediately use this to drill down and get more information about the vulnerability and the endpoints associated with it or deploy an action from Tanium. So we wanted to make it really seamless for you to be able to take advantage of not just the power of investigation within Copilot for security, but the using power of Tanium to perform those remediations that we're so well known for. Okay, Mike, uh, I'm just trying to keep up here and process what I just saw. Let's say I'm a new SOC analyst. Day one, I can open up this console. Okay, uh, they're telling me to look up the CVE. It tells me what it is. Oh no, it's a nine point eight. That's not good at all. So then I can just ask the prompt, and it'll tell me where this is in the environment, and then give me a link into Tanium so I can go remediate it. I mean, already just in a few minutes, I'm thinking that's got to be a productivity enhancement and a real game changer for the SOC. That's the goal. Yeah, I think, you know, we, we're dealing with a skills gap and a talent shortage in a lot of cases uh, and the ability to amplify 
people's ability to investigate and respond to incidents to stay ahead of the bad guys is really what this is all about. So I'm really curious. I know that there's, you you mentioned some skills that are matched. So what we've done is I'm just uh, guessing here, right? So we've probably written some skills that are based in Tanium that then get matched to certain keywords and the prompts. And so where can people find information about what's possible? Yeah, so our public documentation uh, does a really good job of outlining what all the a lot of example prompts, all of the different Centanium sensors that we're using as part of this solution. So it, we had to kind of uh, align individual kinds of prompts and do skills matching so that, that based on what your query is and what your prompt is issued within Copilot for Security, we're doing matching in the background to ensure that we're pulling the right information from Tanium. Uh, so that that's all, uh, pretty well documented. There'll be continued iterations on that to increase the number of sensors that we include as part of the capability. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of good sample and content out there in our public documentation. And we're just scratching the surface. I'm really interested to see what's next in your demo. Yeah, so one of the things I'd like to call out is that we think Tanium has access to a lot of really unique telemetry and things that you couldn't get through any other interface. So one of the things that we've heard from customers a lot uh, over the past couple of years is this uh, the ability to really be able to find those open source vulnerabilities that have been so prominent. So started with Log4j and others, and we've seen it with OpenSSL and other areas like that. So one of the things that we made available in this interface was the ability to pull that information. So you might have a lot of other security tools in your environment that are giving you a lot of great data, but this is one that we think Tanium is really kind of uniquely equipped to be able to provide. So from within Copilot, I can say, I might, you know, in some cases, I'm going to go ahead and say, let's use Tanium just to give Copilot that direction there. It helps to kind of really uh, ensure that the accuracy of the information. So I can say, hey, return the total number of endpoints with a software package for open SSL so that I can start cataloging which computers have the software installed, display the results in a table, alphabetically sorted by host name, and return a Tanium console question results URL. And so this is going out there and querying our SBOM information, so our software bill of materials. So this is the stuff that we have that allows customers to see even you know these embedded libraries that are sitting potentially dormant on systems, but represent a potential real gap in your service cybersecurity hygiene. So the ability to see and find this information and take action on it right away is pretty critical for our customers. And we made this available as one of our kind of core key use cases for this uh, first iteration of Copilot for Security Integration. I just remember when S bomb came out, it was a unique visibility in the industry that to be able to see the vulnerable components that are installed on your endpoints, uh, that next layer down, and now throwing a prompt interface on top of that. That, that I said this is going to be next level, folks. Uh, this is truly next level. Wow. And there you have it. And so one of the things to recognize about the Copilot for Security interface is it's not designed to reflect and spit out thousands of rows of data from the system and have it be particularly usable. So this is why we want to ensure that the integration, the ability to pivot directly out of here to Tanium or export to Excel are things that we wanted to put front and center so that customers could use Copilot for Security to perform this investigation, but then to drill into a lot of more specific information. This is where this is going to happen from within the, the Tanium experience as well. Man, this is this is too much fun. This is like <laughs> it's like being a kid again in technology. It's like, oh my goodness, this is this is real. I think the potential is obvious. So pretty neat stuff. So one of the use cases that we wanted to include as part of this was the kind of the threat investigation experience. And so one of the things that we kind of showcased as part of our demo video was this flow where you can effectively ask very open-ended questions from within Copilot for security. So in this case, you see I really was descriptive about it, said, hey, the network operations team raised an alert about some unusual traffic coming from a device and the remote IP address we uh, that they identified was this one. So just ask Copilot, hey, you know, I'm I'm pretty new to this. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but give me some advice on what I should do about it. And so Copilot went out there, it talked to their own threat defender threat intelligence service, got some information about the IP address in question, and then gave me a, kind of a general list of things that I might want to look for as an analyst. So I might be looking for the device that is generating this traffic. Maybe I want to do a network traffic analysis and capture that and analyze exactly what's going on there. Um, I might to do a remote IP address analysis. And then, hey, you know, if I find that this looks like it's definitely malicious, then at that point it becomes an incident response activity. 
And so then the flow might be, all right, you know, we already have the context about what I was investigating. I, I can be pretty general about what I'm looking for. And, and Copilot for Security saves that context and says, hey, given what I asked about before, ask me, tell me what I can do from within Tanium to maybe help investigate and remediate this. And so you can see Copilot went out there, it chose Tanium as the skill that it was looking for. And it said, all right, based on that IP address that you inquired about, I found that this particular endpoint is the one that's connected to that remote IP address over port 80. And the process associated with that connection is this updater.exe that's being run by a particular user named setup. And so based on that, here's some additional guidance about what you might do about it. So I could connect or disconnect that, that IP address. I could you know, perform this process analysis to get some details more and more specifically about what that process is. I can look into the user that initiated that in the context of the, those credentials, some other things as well. So it, it really provides you with a lot of kind of help from a general perspective, if I'm not exactly sure what I should be doing here, but I see this thing, Copilot can actually go out there and give you that information and then continue on down the path of, all right, you know, give me some more information about the process in question. So at this point, it's going to query Tanium and say, all right, based on that, all right, this was initiated by a scheduled task. And this task was set to run at a particular time. This is the command line associated with this information surfaced by Tanium telling me exactly what happened in the context of this particular process. And so now again, all right, uh, I have a lot of information about this process. I need probably need some more. Give me the SHA-256 hash of this process and tell me if it's malicious. And so... Uh, Copilot for security will then perform that analysis and say, all right, here's what the hash is based on what Tanium is telling me. And I'm not sure if it's malicious or not. Here's how you might check it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, could you check that for me? And then Copilot for security will go out to Defender Threat Intelligence and say, all right, this is actually doesn't have any, any information historically that indicates that this particular process is malicious in nature. Now, what do I do? Have I seen this anywhere else? That's an, a critical question that you often would want to ask in the context of this. And so based on the lookup of a particular hash of this process, I can look at what's going on in real time with Tanium and all, as well as what, was, what happened historically. And I can see, no, it doesn't look like this process has been active anytime recently. So it may just be unique to this particular endpoint. So, so, so I'm just thinking through as a, an investigator here, it, it's not coming up as a known malicious hash but that hash only occurs on one machine right so i'm guessing that's suspicious to me so this is artificial intelligence but it's also some intelligence of the sock analyst still involved here to say okay well that really does sound malicious then yeah you could certainly make that assertion based on the fact that it's a unique occurrence in the environment those are the kind of outliers that you always always should be kind of raising your hackles as a security protect practitioner and then some additional information, maybe I want to get a, a detailed list of processes on the endpoint. And so it's going to go ahead and say, yep, I can go ahead and click this URL, get that information. And then one of the really cool things about Copilot for Security that's outside of the scope of what we do at Tanium is their ability to perform a script analysis. So in the case I've found, all right, you know, there was a MOF comp you know, process being associated with this particular uh, scheduled task. Can you analyze the code that was associated with this and tell me exactly what it's doing? And if this is something I need to worry about, that's one of the really cool features of this is I don't have to go and be a software engineer. I don't really have to understand all the different potential languages that are out there and the scripts that I might see and determine if this is something that's malicious or not. Copilot for Security can analyze that for you. And so we kind of combined elements of Defender Threat Intelligence, Copilot for Security native capabilities, and Tanium data to really get at the heart of the matter, you know, within a pretty short period of time. And so in this case, you can see that what the script is doing, it breaks down exactly what that is. And so really powerful capability when you combine all those different uh, solution sets from within this experience. So really this is of, fascinating to me yeah. because the, one of the popular AI use cases we've heard of is using AI to write code. Here we're using it to do the opposite, to break down code and tell us what it's doing. This is nice. Yeah. So super neat. Helps you really, no matter what you're experience level is, you can see that it can be used uh, for CISO level down to junior analyst and everybody in between, you know, going all the way down to kind of tier three SOC analysts, I think would find a lot of value in this experience. So Mike, uh, I've got a hard question here now. Um, this is all fun and we've all played with AI stuff and we've all seen the hallucinations. So I've got to ask, because I know somebody's thinking it right now as they're watching this. I'm, I'm on the security desk and it's telling me that this machine's vulnerable. Can I trust the data that that machine really is vulnerable or are there a, a, a hallucination, a problem here in any of the data? 
We don't believe so. I mean, I think this is a brand new technology. Um, it is kind of closed with respect. So it's, it's not something that Microsoft large language model is not taking your data as a customer and learning from it or anything like that. So there's no way to kind of poison the interface from an outside perspective. But given the fact that it's using Tanium data, we feel strongly that Tanium has very high fidelity data about everything that we capture and report on. So we feel like what you see here is what you get. Uh, and it's also all governed by our back on the back end as well to ensure that customers and users of Copilot for security are only seeing the things that they're entitled to see. That's comforting. That's good to know in the days of AI. So I know there's a lot uh, we could do here. And there, obviously, there's a whole list of prompts and types of data we can connect to. I'm curious for our audience who is this very hard to set this up and get it working? No, it's, it is incredibly simple. And one of the really cool things about this is that it literally takes a couple of minutes at most to be able to do this. So if, within the Copilot for Security interface, they give you this option of uh, changing your sources that you're using for your prompts and, and all the queries that you're issuing. So you can see Microsoft obviously is going to put all of their products for within the portfolio available here. So you can see their Defender, Sentinel, Intune, all the different cap capabilities they have there. But then they've also introduced a section for partners like Tanium. And so you scroll down here and you see Tanium is listed by default. So every security Copilot customer today will go into this interface and you'll see Tanium here. And it's simply a matter of clicking this. You can click the enable icon here, click that gear. And then all you need to do is populate the Tanium instance that you are working under and then an API token that's associated with your particular user account. And there's a way for uh, Azure administrators to set this in the background so that uh, everybody is going to get the same experience from an instant URL standpoint, but it's also individually controllable. And then if you have any questions about what your Tanium instant URL is and how to generate your API token, it is crazy easy. So all you have to do is go into your Tanium instance. We introduced a new UI element here within Connect very recently. We go do is go to our settings here under Copilot for Security. All you have to do is copy the Tanium instance URL that's reflected here generate this API token, copy that into the Copilot interface, and you're off and running. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. All right. So I, I got I to gotta ask this because I know I've been talking to some other integrations with API tokens lately, and we've got to be careful about the scope of permissions that the API token has and all that. So you're telling me this is all kind of just really uh, served up on a platter, so to speak. It, it's already there. Uh, I can just click the copy of the URL and the token. That's all done for me. That, I'm exactly. sorry. I'm kind of I'm kind of flabbergasted here. This is really <laughs> making this so easy. Wow. Yeah, it was it was definitely one of the kind of core pillars of this as we were getting into it. Like we wanted to make it really easy for everybody to get in there and start rolling up their sleeves and and taking advantage of this right away. And so it's that easy. So I literally just copy paste these two things over into um, the Copilot interface under the settings, and that's it. Yeah, the manifest URL is something that's there for future potential beta releases. So if you wanted to add a custom plugin, Copilot Security has that option available to you. So um, in most cases, your customers can effectively ignore this for the time being, but the instance URL is important. And then the API token element, those are the two things that you need. And you mentioned RBAC. I am curious, uh, what are the, I know this is early days as well. So RBAC on the Tanium side, you said it's, it's read only today. So we don't have to worry about people taking action in Tanium that, that shouldn't be doing that. Um, is there any scope of management of like which machines uh, an analyst could see through that interface? There is. So that's going to be governed by your API token because I, I'm signed into my Tanium instance when I generate this API token that's associated with my user account and my privileges from within Tanium. So whatever computer groups and whatever module permissions that I might have from within Tanium, that's going to effectively get translated over into Copilot and governed there. Every user is going to have their own API token. So it's going to be specific to the user. And so oh. every user of Copilot is going to have effectively their own plug-in settings, and they're going to enter their own values here. So the only thing that would be potentially tenant-wide configurations from a configuration standpoint is this Tanium instance URL. The API token, this is a user-based setting, so it's going to be a, kind of embedded in your own personal experience as a Copilot for security user. Ah, well, that makes it even easier. Uh, very nice. As far as the Tanium requirements here, uh, as far as what modules are licensed on the Tanium side, what's generally the recommended baseline? 
It depends. So there's the only core requirement is the Tanium core platform. And depending upon what you want to use and, and access as part of this from a data set perspective, that's going to be governed by whatever Tanium modules you're licensed to use. So the things that we enabled out of the gate with this were some capabilities for asset and SBOM, for comply, for enforce, uh, and for threat response. And we're going to continue to kind of iterate on that. But so all of the sensors and content that are associated with those are potentially part of the Copilot for security experience. But uh, um, it's not a requirement. It just depends upon, you know, if you don't have those modules, then obviously you won't have access to those sensors and that data. It sounds very flexible. And, and I'm just going to take a wild guess and say that we're working on more modules, more integrations. Uh, to Obviously, this is kind of the, you know, it's like the starter Lego set, right? And so I'm guessing that we're going to be building more Lego types and components to, to plug in here. Absolutely. So this is this is version one, and we're going to continue to develop this as we go on. I think you're going to see additional releases from us this calendar year that's going to expand the scope of what we do, refinements and some of the skills matching in other areas. So yeah, there's there's still a lot more work to be done. We just got over the first hurdle, but we're going to do a lot more with this. So Mike, where can people go to get more information? Uh, they, they've seen how easy it is to set it up. Now they want to learn the prompts, and where can they go to find more information? On our public website, there's a Microsoft Partner Spotlight page that has a, a cool demo video that outlines, that outlines some of the, the kind of showcase use cases we developed, along with a lot of specific information about the uh, the Copilot for security integration, a blog post and other things. And then our public documentation has a section that outlines all of the requirements from a security perspective, all of the sample prompts and things like that, all the sensors that are associated with Copilot for security within Tanium, uh, so that it's all outlined very detailed in a detailed fashion there. Well, Mike, thanks for coming on the show today to give us this truly next level demo. Wow. Uh, you know, we announced this integration at Tanium Converge and co-announced it really with Microsoft Ignite last uh, last year in November. And this year's Converge is going to be in Florida. I know this is early in the year, but I want you to, to mark your calendars. It's always that week before U.S. Thanksgiving because we already have more amazing announcements in the works like Mike is hinting at here today. So I hope we can see you there. And as Mike said in the show notes below, check those links. There's a number of documentation links and articles there, but also I want to uh, highlight one particular one. Uh, Mike was on the Security Insights show with Rod Trent and company over at Microsoft recently, one of our buddies over there. And they had a really good extended conversation. So if you'd like to hear more behind the scenes chatter around Copilot in general and the Tanium integration, I really encourage you to go check out that video also. So there you have it, folks. Uh, this is the fun of doing this show. We get to bring you new exciting things coming out of Tanium Innovation and now more on Microsoft integrations. So there you go. And enjoy this content. Check out those links. And until next time, go Tanium.